All right. Well, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, I'm Michael Chauvin Dalton, uh, the host of Photoshow Live and also the director of the JKC Gallery here in Trenton, New Jersey. And I want to welcome and thank Wendy Ewald for joining us today. Hi, Wendy. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, doing great. And this is a thrill. And thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. Um, we have some of your photos up here at the gallery. So if you visit, uh, you'll be able to see. And we'll be showing work from uh, two books today, Portraits and Dreams and The Devil is Leaving His Cave. And that'll be running while we talk about the book. And uh, this will be released as a, a podcast episode. But then uh, the video from this uh, meeting will also be released on the YouTube channel. So, uh, Wendy, I thought we'd start with just a little bit of, you know, how you got into all of this, how you started in photography. Well, it was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> and I as much as it. you want to get into uh, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and um, I started when I was in, um, in high school, um, mm. actually, and I had a terrific photography teacher which always helps um and um it was actually up after my last year in high school that i got a grant from polaroid to go work with young people in um in labrador uh on a on the first nations um reserve what they call well, that it that reserve. started right away you're yep. working with young people yeah 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 and so I was also learning how to how to use still learning how to use a four by five, which is what I, you know, shot have shot with for most of my life, other other than a Hasselblad for um, a period of time. <laughs> um, so um, so I really started right away doing. I mean, I I didn't expect to keep doing obviously what I was doing because I was like eighteen. And um, but I was really so fascinated by the pictures that the that the kids took, and I and I realized right away that it was so different than what I was doing, um, and um, and now there was a place for both things, and it took me years to sort of let those things blend together, um, which was fine, you know. I was learning to do what I, you know, what I was going to do, so. It just, it, it took time. Um, and, uh, and I, as I was going to different countries, I was doing different, sorry, different kinds of work at the based on the, the culture and um, the experience I was having with the people that I was working on um, as, as well. So that, that's kind of the, the path that kind of, uh, yeah. you know, it was experimentation. At, at, at different times in different ways. And, and you got that grant to work in, it was Nova Scotia, Labrador, right? Yeah, it actually didn't get a grant. It was, <clears throat> I just got um, uh, film and. Oh, okay. And um, because in those days, you know, you everybody volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So, but, but you must have already had an interest in what you were heading towards, right? Like, where did that, where did that interest come from to work oh. with younger people? Well, I had a, um, I have a brother um, who was um, hit by a car when he was young and suffered some brain damage, and um, <clears throat> so I worked as a you know, as a young person, but, you know, because he was only like five years older than me, mm. um, with him doing exercises to help him regain and rewire, you know, his, his brain. Um, and so that, um, you know, that, that really also interested me. And so those were things that I, I had in my, my mind that you could actually use images um, to help people um sort of re reconnect and then that got more you know um complicated as i as i worked um, right in ways yeah um, well we'll talk more about the way you you work with children with students with young people and um how that there's this whole that kind of psychology surrounding the way you work with uh yeah. people but but you know getting back to sort of this this very early work you 
you went, you were doing, you were starting in high school, you said, right? You were yeah. interested in photography. And w one of the, one of the questions I, I was actually going to wait till the end, but maybe this is a question that, that would be good now is it takes a certain kind of humility to set your own work aside, so to speak, right? And to then, you know, sort of devote your life to other people's work, right? Well, I actually don't <laughs> see it that way. <laughs> um, I mean, yes, maybe there is a, there is a certain maybe humility, but I, I found it fascinating and I wanted to, to figure out how to make different pictures. Mm. You know, I was kind of bored by, you know, at a certain point I was, I was bored by, um, you know, documentary photography as I'd seen it. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, I was working with a four by five, so that was like, you know, pretty different. And, um, and I wanted to, um, you know, make pictures that, that were more revealing of, of, you know, the people I was working with than, mm. than what I had seen. So it was really a drive to, to do something uh, that excited me. Um, so in a way, you know, I didn't see it as other people's work. <laughs> I saw this, we were doing this stuff together. That, um, and that is very yeah. true. Uh, your life's work is a collaboration. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also to make, you know, I, I had understood that some of the pictures that I was seeing, although I, you know, I loved photography mm -hmm. and, you know, I, um, you know, loved the work of a lot of photographers, but, um, but after a while, um, you know, I had seen that. Right. I wanted something else. <laughs> Who were some of your then, then inspirations early on? You said you had a good teacher and, and yeah. Well, I think, Two, two of the people were, were um, my teacher, Wendy Snyder McNeil, who's no longer alive, but she was a fantastic photographer. And, um, and where was and that? In, um, it was in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Um, and, then, um, and then Emmett Gowan really influenced me. Um, and um, so it was less, in, and, and, it was less documentary people than sort of taking these more emotional um, sort of direct um, photographers and combining them with the idea of documentary. Um, Cause I never really, I mean, I, I love Lewis Hine, for example. Um, and- um, That tracks. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <So that's, laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, you, you knowing Emmett Gowan's work and Lewis Hines, Lewis Hines' work, boy, I, I can see it. I can see the the lineage in the, in the the work, and and the way you put together books and tell stories. Yes. Yeah, and also the way that that they use the use the camera. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you know that the the large format camera and uh, you know the feeling of the the light and you know I was really. Right. Um, interested in that and um, and the playfulness of gallons, obviously. Yeah. And uh, just to uh, um, uh, sort of uh, let people know, in case they don't know, you you were awarded a MacArthur Fellowship and a Guggenheim Fellowship and many other awards along the way, uh, and a national NEA for humanities and an NEA for arts, and I think that. All those awards, there's something very similar to your work in the awards you're receiving. Meaning, I mean, there's a track, right? I mean, there's a reason why you, you, you receive the NEA both for the humanities and the arts, right? Mm -hmm. Right. There's a there's there's a sociological element to your work, uh, as well as an, an arts element to your work. Where, um, right? Yeah. I, I, when where you know when you where you were when you started out and where you are now, do you? Do you have this appreciation for the fact that you've you've added to the dialogue in both worlds? Well, I'm 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 happy that you know that that I you know that people have understood it you know that that way. Um, I I guess 
you know, when I started out, it was really about being a photographer and then figuring out how to shoehorn everything else into it. Um, but um, but it's it, it was also frustrating because people couldn't figure out where yeah. I fit. Um, and I think that that was one thing that was that really the MacArthur really sort of made that a little more understandable, I think, for people um, that uh, I wasn't, I mean, just a teacher. There's nothing about being just a teacher because a teacher is a wonderful thing. Um, but um, but I wanted to do it in a bit of a different way. And also I wanted to, it, um, let's see, how could I say this? <laughs> I wanted to really respect this, the the people I was working with, and you know the idea that um, it was social work was did not really make me too happy, because um, you know these these people I was working with were were incredible, and um, you know whether they were children or whether they were you know grown ups or stall owners or whatever, um, and um, so I wanted to them to be respected as image makers as as much as I was, and also thinkers, and 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 I was thinking with them about how to, you know, how to frame things. And I mean, I don't mean looking through the camera, but you know, ideas. Um, and um, you know, sometimes that was very difficult for me because I I didn't understand what was you know, what they were seeing. And I get, it was my job to try and figure out as much as I could what they were seeing and help them to, you know, move forward with what they were seeing um, and give them the, the tools and, you know, whether they, I mean, when we were working with large format Polaroid, you know, they were able to make um, pictures that, you know, that were incredibly sharp and huge and, you know, all That's that. Right. So, <laughs> um, so that was great, you know, that that they didn't have a a lesser lesser toolbox than I I did is what I wanted to happen. I mean, that's pretty hard, but um, but I think they became very um, you know, very expert at using the camera. And and the kids that I worked like I, I, with in Mexico they didn't want to take the cameras home because they were shooting at home. They weren't shooting with me. I mean, although we did shoot together and then, then they went home, but right. um, they wanted, um, didn't want to get to that point of going home with the camera until they knew exactly how to use it. And it was pretty difficult. I mean, they, they had to, to um, uh, measure the distance between themselves and the subject because mm -hmm only a, a dial of you know feet or meters that they had to set you couldn't see it and you know so I had to you know figure out how to teach them how to how to measure that distance without any that's right know, difficulty <laughs> so there was all this stuff that that and and it was fun it was just it, it was fun and it was challenging and um and then they had to you know, once they shot the film because it was positive negative, they had to peel it apart and put the negative in sodium sulfite and carry that around. And um, you know, they were. Did they like, have the little Polaroid buckets? Yeah. <laughs> the Polaroid pails. Yeah. Yep. Well, until we, I think maybe we ended up using ice cream buckets <laughs> because because we didn't we couldn't afford them. Right. So we, Oh, we went and we got all this, you know, these plastic things of ice cream and dumped out all the ice cream or they ate a lot of it. Then, <laughs> well, let's let's talk about that structure a little bit more before we, we start looking at the books. These are classes in, in a sense that you're teaching, whether you were invited to teach or you set these up. How how are they set up? How are students selected? Well, in what we're going to look at, which is Kentucky and um, Mexico, um, <clears throat> In, in Kentucky, I worked in a, in a small school, small rural school that, um, uh, and I worked with all of the kids in the, in the fourth, fifth, sixth, or the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. And they had like 15 kids in each grade. So mm. that was perfect. I mean, if I could do that 
you know, again, <laughs> I would love to do that. Um, and so, and that worked really well. So I worked with them for um, four or five years, some of those kids, um, because I was there, you know, that long and they could all be part of it. Um, okay. And, and just and then, quickly, um, uh, yeah. you and we'll come back to this idea. Yeah. You, you, the books are also collaborations, not just with your students, but with writers and critics or poets. Yeah. Or, yeah. And are are any of those people present at this moment, or does that come later when you're putting the book together? Well, that's a good i good thought. I think uh, some of them, like I tried to do that a lot in Kentucky. Um, so I actually, this is a little bit different. So I actually had to, um, I had a book designer, Katie Holmans, which, who is sure. terrific. <laughs> and we've been friends, <laughs> close friends ever since then, wow. um, to design the, the book. But I, but she also came and did a workshop with the kids, um, on book design and, oh, wow. and making their own books and sewing them and all that. And uh, and then I also had a had a book editor come and and work with them on you know how we were going to edit the pictures for the book and the mm -hmm. sections and um, things things like that. So it was it was really exciting and yeah. So we had a, a year long book book class while That's we amazing. were amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I've never had that much time since. <laughs> but it, it was really. Right. <laughs> Right. Okay. So then, then getting back to the, the class itself, the course itself, then, so you had, you had the 15 in each section. Yeah, so it was a regular, grader. it was a regular class. They met, um, uh, two, I think each, each class, each grade met two times a week. Um, we built a, um, a dark room, which was a plywood box in a classroom that mm -hmm. was, empty at at that time and um and then inside of that you know we was the dark room and and then outside was where they developed their film because we used changing bags oh wow yeah um and so we had um and then when once they were finished making their prints they would put them up on the on the the uh, blackboard or whatever it was the board and um, and then we would um, critique them. You know, we would all get in, you know, circles on the floor and look at one picture at a time and give responses and back and forth forth conversations and and trying to get them to understand that um, when they took a picture, um, it it wasn't it wasn't just how they felt about what was in the picture but how they communicated what they felt by how they took the picture. Mm. So, so that's something we got sort of deeply into. And that was the hardest thing to, to, um, to share with them. Um, but, uh -huh. but they did, they, they were amazing. Yeah. Yeah. In, in I, mean, the end. I mean, you're, you're, uh, coming, you're coming and building a dark room and, <laughs> and all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we were also using, uh, um, stabilization processor and i don't know if most people probably don't know what that is but that's what they used to use in in newspapers oh um, yes yes so you put the you know you expose the piece of paper and then you put it through a series of rollers yeah and it was um, quick quick rc printing with yeah. very fast acting chemicals and or rc and, that, oh okay yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and maybe i don't know did they last those prints i'm not sure no <laughs> yeah and they stuck together too that's so, right <laughs> it's not great yeah uh, for, yeah well that, that's a good setup for portraits and dreams um so let's i'm gonna uh for those of you who are watching um, I'm gonna let me share the screen and I'll start the slideshow here. And uh, this will just play while we're talking about porches and dreams, so you can. And the the devil has left his caves, and we'll we'll start that. There we go. Can you all see that? Okay. I'm gonna take yes. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and actually, yeah, oh yeah, Gary responded okay. to the uh, stabilization process. You could type questions in the chat too as well yeah so there we go. 
So uh, Portraits and Dreams, uh, let, why don't we talk a little bit about that. This, uh, for those of you who can still see me, this is a reissue of the mm -hmm. first edition. And what's very cool about this reissue is there's ex this expanded edition with, a, with some reunion photos in the back. Uh, but why, why don't we start with the, the start of the book? And really, uh, this isn't the, the, obviously the first time you collaborate uh, in this type of way with, uh, with your students sh showing their work and writing their stories, but it, was this the first kind of widely known book of that kind yeah. of work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the first time that it was, a, it was the, it was the first book. Oh, the okay. Book I did. I mean, I did another book before that, but that was with other um, photographers who were working in the region of Appalachia. Right. Um, and, um, and also I figured out then like these, this is a self portrait. So we had different sections that had to do with the different sort of assignments that I gave them. And this was community, um, it was after church. Um, right, well, and, uh, while, while those pictures are, are going through, uh, I'll share another part of the book, which is um, when the students also write some uh, somewhat of yeah. a, 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 journal, a journal style entry, right? Uh, so this is from Darlene Watts, uh, and I'll read uh, the first couple of paragraphs. My uncle died and I went to see him in the funeral home, but it, it didn't really look like him. He always had his hair parted on one side and they had it all pushed back to cover up where he'd been shot. The acid from the bullets scattered all over his body. Mommy paid for the flowers and his suit and all that. I had him dressed in dark blue pants and vest and a light blue shirt with little stripes on it and a striped blue tie. She picked him out a gold casket. The funeral was at Trent's at Delphia. It was so sad and I didn't pay any attention to anything. It was so sad that I didn't. I just looked at his face. I couldn't go to where they buried him. It was hard enough to see him dead. Mommy told me to hug him so I could remember him, but I couldn't. I was afraid if I kissed him or hugged him, I was going to get him wet with my tears. And that is such a, a beautiful and, and honest and raw snapshot of a young child's experience of perhaps the first time they see someone in a casket who they knew, but now no longer seems like them, right? I mean, I think that's a very shared experience for a lot of people. Uh, so talk about a little bit, you know, about the kinds of instruction, encouragement, conversations you had with making these photos and having these 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 kids write such honest things. Well, the 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 text is is actually from con one to one conversation with me and 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 them. And but of course, I didn't realize how amazing it would be um, mm. and open and et cetera. But I I um made lists of questions before um, that before we did that because I, it was the last thing that we did while making the book. Um, so I knew these kids really well. Um, and um, so it just, and, it, and then I just followed them, you know, when I, I would ask them about, you know, their dreams or, I, you know, because we had this arranged in dreams, family, community, um, self-portrait and something else which I don't, animals <laughs> um, i could probably look <laughs> while you're talking <laughs> yeah and and so so that was kind of a you know an easy way to to talk about things because those animals were very, yep yeah personal to to them and that's what they had been taking pictures of right. um and um and also the, that's where the sort of psychology comes from too, because, you know, I thought, I thought a lot about, you know, what they were feeling, not, not just, you know, wanting to have long conversations and especially about their fantasies and the way that they thought about things, um, which, um, and, and also I had the pictures that they were like, this is Denise's picture of her twin brothers. And there she is you know, dancing and, mm -hmm. and her self portrait. So, so I could also make questions from, from the photographs. Um, and, and they're just a start, starting point for things. Um, for and, and you said, because you know them so well, this is the, the text part of it. You would typically wait to, until you're sort of into, yeah. The, yeah, the, the, 
the lessons and the lectures and everything else and, and really getting to know them. Yeah, yeah. And we really didn't do lectures so much is that is that I had a whole lot of stuff around to look at. Mm. So I would kind of follow them, you know, if they got into, you know, like a World War Two book or something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we we'd look at it together. And, uh, and then that was a really fascinating conversation, because in the middle of it, you know, there was a picture of Hitler. And I said, um, you know, do you all know who Hitler was? And they had no idea. And, oh, wow. and, um, and then when and one of them, I said, well, guess, what do you think? And so one of the kids said, <laughs> well, a baseball player, you know, which kind of comes from hitter, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, all those things were just so interesting. Um, yeah. And then also we had a book that we read called Opal, which which was a, um, a book that was written by a, a girl who's, who was orphaned and was living in a very difficult situation. And uh, so she wrote, wrote this book on the back of um, paper bags, because that's all she had. And um, it was about her fantasy world. And she named all, it was a farm. So she named all the animals, different names and okay. lives for them. So, so they loved that book, you know, so, so they right. understood that you could, you know, do something um, that would interest them and other people. Yeah, you 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 talked earlier about going to Labrador, and and now you're in Appalachia, and later on you'll be in in Mexico, and then in, also in Chicago and all. Um, are are you specifically picking places, or are you being invited to? Well, that places? changed. Say that, that again. Changed. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, it was, it was, um, you know, I, it was me sort of putting together things like I knew about this group in, in Appalachia and that I worked with and I Apple shop and I, I also, um, you know, I heard about a, a girlfriend of mine was going to Labrador in this program. And so I thought, oh, that sounds fun. And, you know, but I didn't really know that much about what I was doing, but it was what I was interested in. And then eventually, um, you know, people started asking me. Um, and so, and then now I've just been back to where I worked in Mexico 30 years ago. Hmm. And, um, and I was, you know, invited to do that. And then, and then I worked in Colombia, uh, you know, um, South America for, right. for a couple of years. And so they've just invited me to go back. So, so then that's another sort of um, way of um, an, unfolding the story, I guess. Yeah. And, and then the, the book now ends with reunion photos. What was oh, that well, one? well, yeah. Um, oh, it was just great. <laughs> Oh, it was amazing. You know, there's so many, we had a reunion. It's 30 years, I think. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Or, yeah, because mm -hmm. we, they were, the kids were in their four, late 40s and 50s and early 50s. And um, we had a, a reunion to begin with and then, and then ended up, you know, I end up spending a lot of time, a lot of time right. with the kids individually. Um and um, but yeah, they had a lot of memories and um, they loved seeing each other. They loved seeing the photos. It was a very, very joyous time, which I, I hadn't I was just nervous about it. <laughs> but, um, but it was um, yeah, it was one of sort of the highlights, I guess, of my life, you might say. This is and, and I imagine there, there were a lot of stories being exchanged and, and catching up and experiences. And did they talk about these? this work and the early experiences of this work yeah what were the memories like what were their well some of them had really specific memories other didn't others didn't have you know very many at all i mean it wasn't mm -hmm. um oh wow. yeah yeah um and this is gary and 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 his parents and and they were the they were the most disadvantaged of all the kids that i worked with and now right. you know, he's a he um is in works in um i can't remember the the school but but he you know got a degree and and oh uh, wow 
in a college degree, and then he mm -hmm. went to work at, in, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, Mar I can't remember the, the university, but um, but he's a very respected member of the university community. Um, and then maybe some other stories or memories? Um, let's see. Well, Russell um, ended up becoming a line man um, for the electric company, but he is so successful and <clears throat> so expert um, that um, you know now he has a big, huge farm actually, and mm. um, and his lifestyle is completely different. Um, mm -hmm. Did you know, did anyone have a kind of response to sort of remembering this and an, an impact it had on them, the experience, or? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, like one of the girls talked about um, how, um, you know, that the, they had no uh, sense of, you know, um, critical learning mm. and, um, and how, you know, that the, the first time that they learned so many things was when I came, not just about photography, but, and then Gary, um, who was at the university, said that he he understood that there was a a world outside Appalachia um, and um, <clears throat> and how important that was to him they, they were, so so they were like they were hungry mm -hmm. um, and um, and you know they're also about the photographs they 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 just are amazed that people um, respond to their photographs, um, and ex amazed and excited, very excited about it. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, and, and they were when they were young, because we, you know, we went to ICP, they had a show at ICP. Mm. And, um, so, you know, they, they understood that, that, that people like them at that point. And, um, and but at the same time they were learning things like they'd never had iced tea and they were wow. very happy about iced tea. <laughs> well, they, no, sorry, they were very happy about hot tea. They were only hot tea. Oh, they, that's right. They would have sweet right. tea, of course, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so there was so much learning going on around it all. Um, mm -hmm. And um, you know, being kids, you don't filter into one, you know, one stream of what you're right. learning. You just take everything so, in. So let's Let's switch now to the, the devil is leaving his cave. And there are a lot of similarities, of course, to the, the process of how you work and how you teach and uh, how you collaborate. Um, uh, this one was published in... Just now, sort of. Just, it's just just now, of. that's right, just now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, it's kind of a two-part series, in a sense, right? It's uh... yeah, yeah. It's two projects. Um, you know, one thirty years ago, mm -hmm. um, and one, you know, two years ago, um, in Chicago. So, so it's it's um, you know, trying to look at um, at immigration um, over place and over time. So um, there are people in Chicago, all the, all the kids in Chicago that I worked with all are, are from, um, Mexico, mostly Guerrero and, um, uh, one of the other one, other big places. Um, but Chiapas. I can't remember. No, no. no Chiapas it, it was is the other Chiapas. project. Right, right. Yeah. And right. Chiapas is where I worked, um, 30 years ago. That's um, right. Those were the classes for the Maya, Ladino, and, and, and Cho yeah. children in Chiapas. Yeah, yeah. and they speak Sotil and Sotil, sorry, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, but but the um, the other folks, um, well, this is, this is the Mayan kids, and mm -hmm. these are photographs they took with um, Polaroid positive negative film and, um, and a very large camera. Um, mm -hmm. Some of it was too big for some of the kids almost to reach the shutter because, you know, you put your thumb underneath the camera. That was the big 2024 Polaroid? No, 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 no. They're, oh. they're like, they're like, they're 
like this. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay. I thought you but, had that but, giant Polaroid. <laughs> no, no, I, I was going to do that, but then, then they stopped doing it just at the end. They, <laughs> you know, had said I could, but, uh, right. happened, I, right. but anyway, um, and um, so this is a dream picture, for example, and these kids, um, you know, were very taken by the idea of photographing their dreams and making, I don't know where these masks came from, that he's using there and he went down to the river and started a fire and then mm. had the smoke all coming wow so you know <laughs> they, they were very detailed and serious about the yeah. work that, that they were doing um and these are kids like nine to 13 or something mm -hmm. this is one of the pictures also taken in chiapas and this is the title that 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 he put on that photograph the devil is leaving his cave right which is of a metaphor for so many things in that in that community um uh, and, yeah go yes ahead. the devil is leaving his cave I, I did want to talk about the that title itself there's uh from what i could tell from sort of digging around and looking at the book and reading the book it's it's based a bit on the the, the mesoamerican creation stories idea that when you come out of your cave you sort of mm -hmm. you're coming out of a sleep you're coming out of a slumber you're um it's it's you're mm -hmm. you're waking up, but you're using it in also in a contemporary context of sort of discovering who you are. I get the sense of instead of seeing seeing yourself through other people's eyes, you see yourself as as you you know you are, so to speak. Right? It's a way of uh, dealing with stereotypes and racism and sexism as a way of sort of seeing yourself as this this wholly formed person. Is that is that right? Yeah, I I, I that is true, um, and. But also you're starting out, and maybe this is what you're saying actually, is you, you're starting out with the with the devil is um is um you know a, a fright a frightening creature. Mm -hmm. And when the devil comes out of the cave, then it is a self-discovery, like you're saying. Um, but it also is fearful at the same time. Mm. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, there's also very, so many things, I mean, as, as you probably read one of them, but, but there are so many things that, um, that are um, spiritual that are very different from what we, you know, we understand um, or what we're familiar with, I guess. And, um, and also these kids are in two different groups. One, one are the Mayan, Mayan kids who are Mayan speakers and, um, um, and their traditions are, are Mayan, like like this, like this boys. Um, and then the others are are Ladino, which is which is a combination of of um, a Spanish and um, and it, well, not really and indigenous, but Spanish. At, at one point, their 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 heritage is Spanish. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so uh, let me. Um... You Sorry, are you hearing the dog? What's that? Are you hearing my dog? I, I heard a little dog. <laughs> it's okay. Because <laughs> I can move too. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Um, again, I want to read a little bit from the, the book just to give everyone a, a full sense that there's also text and stories and all. And so this is, uh, oh, sorry, I don't have, oh, it, it's El Peña. Uh, my mother is from, uh, and, and I'm going to apologize in advance for my pronunciations, uh, Michoacan, San Pedro. Mm, that's the other place, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Hacuaro. And my dad is from Morelia. I do want to go to, to one day. Mexico is so cool. I think my parents got married a year after they decided to come here. They got on a bus and they walked through the desert. My mom was pregnant with my brother at the time. They took the bus from Morelia. I assume it was pretty hard because they had to walk for days through the desert. They were taken to a hotel in Arizona where there was only one room with a whole bunch of beds. My uncle who was living in Chicago came to pick them up. Now my dad works in construction. My mom stays at home. She makes really good food. I have a younger sister. I like to draw. I'll draw things from reference or I'll make original characters. Now I'm trying to make up a story, adding pictures and words. I just want to see how they connect to each other. It will be about how I see the world, I think. And again, like they just they just tell their story. They just tell these, these such such uh, you know moments in their lives 
uh, unabashedly, right? It, 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 their ability to, to concisely share these things, is, it's so wonderful. Um, and, oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say um, that, you know, that also was, was tape recorded. Um, mm. And so these are taken over, you know, I mean, so, so we, we hung out for like, eh, like 45 minutes or something like that and, and had a conversation. And sometimes I would go back and do it again if, you know, if they wanted to or I mm -hmm. wanted to, whatever, so. Yeah, can, can you talk about the pairing uh, of this newer work and older work as well? Yeah, so, um, so I, you know, really didn't, I mean, I sort of came from this feeling. I, I always wanted to do a book of, of the, the work from Chiapas because I think it is so extraordinary. Um, and I, I don't, I'd shown a, you know, it separately, but never, you know, in, in this kind of extensive way. And, um, but I didn't want it to be, you know, about just going back um, because I thought, I think it's very important. Well, first of all, I think immigration is an, an incredibly important issue and I've done a lot of work on it in the, in the you know, last maybe 15 years or something like that. And, um, and these are, you know, our kids and families that stayed in Chiapas. Um, but now I'm learning that that didn't necessarily happen in, in both the communities I worked in. But, um, and, um, you know, these are other families that came from Michoacan and Guerrero. Um, and why, you know, why do some come and others not come? And what does it mean to be very rooted in a culture and a, um, you know, in a, in a language and a past like the Chiapas kids are as, as opposed to, you know, the, the, the kids coming from, um, coming from places and they're probably Ladino kids there. I mean, mm. they're not Mayan kids either, but, um, to to the U.S. and you know how do they feel about who they are, um, as opposed to you know the kids in in Chiapas and then how do they use that to to make pictures um, and which they did they made pictures in 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 Chicago these are portraits that I made of them um, that with a large format camera and and then I gave them. Um, the um, and I got transparency uh, and, and they put it over um, prints that I made. And they get to design and draw and, and yeah, do what yeah. they want to their portraits, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and as soon as I mean, I just said, OK, just write your name, on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I didn't I didn't want to direct them. But and then as soon as they started doing that, then they started doing all drawing all these things on yeah. them. And I was just like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> and uh, it was totally different than what I thought was going to happen. But um, well, I so imagine that must that must be a, a big part of the work you end up seeing is it's not exactly what you thought it was going to be. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is to, to you know, to be changed by it. For me to be changed by it, mm -hmm. as well as as you know, for them to do it, and um, and I don't know if I've said this before, but sometimes it's it's very frustrating because I don't understand what's going on, and I'm thinking, uh oh, oh, this isn't <laughs> this isn't what it should be, and uh, I've made some mistakes here. I've asked the wrong questions, you know, it's the wrong relationship or something, and then then you know, something starts happening that, that right. is very um, surprising and exciting. Yeah. And I mean, with these kids in Chiapas, they were starting doing amazing photographs to begin with. Right. And, um, so. and you, you, you actually kind of walked into uh, my, my last question. <laughs> and maybe more will come up, but what have you learned from all of this, from so much, from collaboration, from working with underrepresented populations, which clearly you you s seek, right? When you're when you want to collaborate, you're looking to give voice to people who are underrepresented. What 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 has surprised you? What have you learned from all of this? Well, I mean, I think it's sort of changed. I mean, I mean, I guess I would say that what I'm seeking to do is to find understand things you know 
and rather than to give somebody a voice um, <clears throat> because I think we all have voices and um, so I mean even in <clears throat> starting in in um, you know Labrador I didn't know anything about Native Americans and I and I and and so I wanted to know and that's kind of how it how it starts and then if I don't understand it I get really scared because I think oh well I'm never going to be able to communicate <laughs> this if I don't understand it mm -hmm. and, and then gradually um you know it might be one image or um a series of image or something I see something there that that I think is very connected to the place that I'm that I have been living in and um and then you know begin to to look at more and more and more pictures and, and it sort of um, comes into a, um, a context um, that, that does make sense to me. And I'm hoping that I can then, you know, work with them to make a way of sharing it, whether it's an exhibition or a book or whatever, that, um, that um, communicates to people who are looking at it instead of just saying, Oh, these poor people, which is the last thing that I, I want to do, or obviously they want to do. And um, so um, so that's um, ma making a context for that is right. extremely important. And so I lied. I have one more question. Uh, <laughs> the the th and it, was, it was one I, I think we started to touch on and I wanted to come back to. There is this thread of dreams in your work. Where, when did you realize that that was a, a vehicle for this incredible expression that comes out in the work you, these students do? Yeah, it was when I was in Kentucky and um, I, um, you know, I, I lived in this, in that community um, in the, in the holler in, in Letcher County and for five years and so I had a lot of close neighbors and we did a lot of things to together we farmed together and um, made things together and um, so I you know saw the kids a, a lot and um, and I realized that well first of all their lives were very different because they were really tie tied to the animal world I mean they they you know raised the animals they slaughtered them they you know, um, cook them, you know, um, you know, every, and then the vegetables they ate, they, you know, raised them. And, and so, um, <clears throat> that was a big part of their lives. And that's why we have the animal section in that, mm -hmm. <laughs> in that book. And, um, and I watched these kids play with each other. And I remember one incident where they were, where two boys were playing at one of them was, was a hunter and one was an animal and and you know they were doing the whole play acting of of the hunter shooting the animal and it was a very intimate uh you know moment of like their bodies to each other but but also about this whole predator and, and uh, prey and and so i at that moment i really do did think about um how can I do that? How can I, you know, construct a way that we can we can do that? Um, and um, and then I I came to the idea of dreams because I I knew that I had to have something that would be easily understood. You know, I can't, I couldn't just say imagination or what are you imagine or was, but I said you know what is a dream? What's one of your dreams? Hmm. And, and can you how how can you make it? And where where? And then I. And eventually um, um, linked it up with with the concept of vantage point so that they begin to learn how to use the camera to um, to change the reality. And that if you, you know, wanted to have an attacker, you know, in um, <laughs> attacking the victim, that you need the, the attacker needed to be really big. So you'd have to have the camera, you know, close. Um, to to the attacker and the victim is small in the background or whatever you know and it teach them you know what it means to look at things from different perspectives um and which of course you know now I've, I've done a lot of big educational projects in different countries but and 
that that is a pretty meaningful yeah. idea to learn how you can change how you see things, but also you can understand how other people see things. Right. Uh, and um, so that that's all fun, you know, sort of all weaves weaves together. But but yeah, it's very important that you don't have to accept reality as it is when you're making a photograph. Um, you can create your own. Yeah. Well, which as photographers we know that. But yes. You know. <laughs> um, well, I want to thank you, and and we'll we'll um, we'll open up for um, questions, but. Uh, I want to just wrap up this sort of podcast part of the the show and, and let everyone know these books are available at Mac Books <laughs> and uh, or wherever uh, you uh, buy your books. Um, and and just thank you so much. This has been terrific. No, oh, thank you. All right.